My name is Bramis, Chrome Developer Relations Engineer here at Google, and this is Unleash the Power of Scroll-Driven Animations. In the previous episode in this series, I introduced you to the concept of scroll-driven animations. Let's not waste too much time and dive right in by creating our very first scroll-driven animation. On this page here, I have added a reading indicator at the top of the page. The reading indicator expands from no width at all to filling up the entire width of the page. The animation is set up using a CSS animation. It's a regular set of keyframes attached to the reading indicator. The animation has a linear easing and takes two full seconds to complete. The animation currently runs on the default document timeline, which ticks forward as time passes by. Every time I reload the page, the document timeline starts at zero seconds and the animation restarts. To change the animation to a scroll-driven one, there's a new type of timeline that you can use, namely a scroll timeline. This is a special type of timeline that tracks the scroll position of a scroll container. The startmost scroll position represents 0% progress and the endmost scroll position represents 100% progress. When using such a timeline as a timeline of an animation, the animation will be controlled by the act of you scroll. So back to the reading indicator. The animation is running, but it's not scroll driven yet. To do that in CSS, you have two new features. One, the animation timeline property. This property allows you to specify the timeline that controls the animation's progress. And two, the scroll function. This function creates a new scroll timeline, automatically set up to track the nearest ancestor scroller in the block direction. Combine the two, declare it on the reading indicator, and that's all it takes to make the animation scroll driven. And no, I also like to remove the original animation duration, as seconds have no meaning here. Alternatively, instead of removing it, you can also choose to replace it with a value of auto. Here's the page with the code applied. As I scroll down or up the scroller, the animation scrubs forwards or backwards in response. When I pause scrolling, the animation also pauses at its current position. If you're wondering if you can put the value of the animation timeline property in the animation shorthand, the answer here is unfortunately no. Even stronger, the animation timeline property is a reset-only subproperty of the shorthand, meaning that its value gets reset when you use the shorthand. As a result, make sure that you declare the animation timeline property after using the animation shorthand. If you do it the other way around, the shorthand will reset the animation timeline property to its initial value. Okay, that was pretty cool and fairly easy to do, right? But how does this scroll function work and how does it know which scroller to track? Well, the scroll function creates an anonymous scroll timeline that walks up the ancestor tree from the targeted element to find the nearest ancestor scroll. In this example, that happens to be the root element. This nearest ancestor scroll scroll progress is then tracked in the block direction. Note that it's called an anonymous scroll timeline because you're not giving the timeline a name which you can refer to later on. In a future video, I'll show you how to create a name one. No worries. To tweak which crawler the function should find and which axis to track, you can pass two arguments into the scroll function. One being the scroller and the other one being the axis. The accepted values for axis are block, inline, x, or y. Accepted values for the scroller are root, nearest, and self. Here's a little tool that allows you to change the values on the fly to see what they mean. The default value for scroller is nearest, which tracks the nearest ancestor of the subject that is a scroll container. Change it to root to track the root scroller, and the third option of self allows you to track the elements its own scroll offset. Setting the axis to block or inline tracks progress along that specific axis of the scroll container. The default value is block, and the interpretation of it depends on the writing mode of the element. You can also use X or Y to specify an axis that is independent of the writing mode. You might have noticed that in the code for the revealing indicator, I use the scroll function without any arguments. That works because I rely on the default values. However, default value for scroller is nearest Yet somehow I am tracking the root scroller progress. Well, this is not a typo here, because the nearest scroller of the progress indicator 
also happens to be the root scroller. So here, the two keywords for this case specifically target the very same element. And oh, should there be no ancestor scroller, for example, if the root element does not have any overflow, then the animation becomes inactive. Before I conclude this video, let's not forget that you are not limited to only CSS to create scroll-driven animations. The Web Animations API, or WAPI for short, also comes with a bunch of classes that allow you to create a scroll-driven animation. To create a scroll timeline, create a new scroll timeline instance. When creating an animation, use the timeline option to attach that timeline to the animation. The scroll timeline interface can be configured through the source and access options. While Axis accepts the same values as with the CSS approach, the source here is not a keyword, but a reference to an element in the DOM. And that's it for this video in the series. To recap, I showed you how to create an anonymous scroll timeline in CSS using the scroll function that will automatically track the nearest ancestor scroller in the block direction. Use the scroller and Axis arguments to tweak which scroll element to track in which direction. And furthermore, I showed you how to do the very same in JavaScript to use it with the Web Animations API. In the next video, I'll introduce you to the View timeline, which allows you to track an element across the scroll port. See you in the next video.